What is up YouTube and welcome to this Equinox review and ending explain video. This was a curious show that layered its mystery right up until the final episode, but sadly while the ending sort of made sense, it was not very satisfying unfortunately as the whole season had drip fed us uh, intrigue and plot throughout, but unfortunately I was expecting something a bit bigger. Now there will be spoilers in this video so please do drop a like down below if you enjoyed it and subscribe with notifications on if you want more from us. We opened with the start of the season with graduates getting ready to ride around town drinking beer and celebrating. Now we see Ida argue with her mother before the truck goes missing with the kids. And while we see her family, including her sister, deal with the fallout of this trauma, her sister Astrid has visions of the truck going missing, or at least the kids on there going missing, seemingly predicting what had actually happened. Now we catch up with her as she is older, and we see her as a radio presenter on a mystery show. Now a caller who has their radio up too loud calls to explain that he knew her sister Ida and knows why she went missing. He explains there is another reality, and he saw the people on the truck go missing and hangs up, at which point Astrid goes mad and decides to investigate it under the guise of making a radio program, which that whole plotline seemingly gets forgotten about until she sees her husband later in the season. She is seemingly separated from her husband, which we find out, and it's a plot point which is really largely pointless. She goes to meet Jacob but can only find his brother and Jacob was the one who actually called in and Jacob was Ida's boyfriend before she went missing. There were three survivors including Jacob who did not go missing and the police did try to pin the disappearance of all the graduates on him as she goes to speak to a cop who says he knows that the survivors know more than they let on. Throughout the season, Astrid has visions of a weird, misty, amber world, and she saw this as a child, and she started to see it when she was an adult as we got closer to the equinox which happens every 21 years her mother encouraged her to visit this cave which is called and she visited it in her dreams and in meditation but her father was convinced that she should stop and he didn't believe any of this which led the two parents to split up now we learn that jacob did actually kill himself and in the past he had a tattoo on his arm and he got this on his 18th birthday saying that he would die on this date that was tattooed on his arm. It turns out that Jacob was trying to get Ida and her friends to join in in a plot with a seemingly Equinox cult. This cult has the logo and he also has a grimoire that he explains is the cult of the Equinox and he wants them to go to a ceremony with this cult on an island. Now the logo of the Equinox is 3,500 years old and it seems to represent all of the equinoxes. Now Lepus or the Hair King is integral to the cult as is Ostara which is represented by a bird. Now we did have this and it was interesting that throughout the show we did have this hair and birds and Ostara featured in different parts and we do learn that the Hair King and Ostara were in love as part of a sort of old wives tale or a kid's story. The Equinox logo was drawn around Ida's teacher, Henrik, by the truck driver who is seemingly brain dead, but we would later learn he was trapped in this cave reality or the Hare's world all this time. Now we would find out that Henrik is indeed the Hare God and it explains why he was deemed as controlling by Astrid's adopted mother and controlled the kids. The cult are prevalent as we see graves of cult members have the logo. Now the kids, including Ida, go camping in the past and Jacob explains his grimoire and is cagey about how he got it, but as of the final episode it's obvious that he was given it by Henrik. There are six prophecies and they each receive one with Jacob prophesied to be punished and Ida would be sacrificed. It turns out that she is Ostara and this equinox in a ritual happens every 21 years. Now there's a big twist however as we see the kids go to the ceremony which they find weird but at first Ida is given an egg and she drinks it and then a bird necklace only for her to be impregnated by the hair god, which we learn 
is Henrik. Yes, absolutely crazy considering we saw Astrid stay at her house later and would explain the weird sort of vision she had of him. Now, not content with that, the show twists and turns heavily, and I appreciate the show was only six episodes at 40 minutes being the average length of the episode, because to be honest, I feel that shows are way, way too long these days. And Jacob became angry after the ceremony because, well, she banged a hair in front of her friends, and this led her to be ostracized in the past from her friendship group. Now there are hints later in the season how Astrid is not actually the sister of Ida, or at least a physical sister that is. And while Astrid was a gift to her mother, Astrid's mother made a deal with the hair god as she could not get pregnant. And well, the deal was that she would get pregnant and have a child, but she would give up this child on the child's 18th birthday, and that was Ida. She changed the deal though, making it so that Ida would give up her firstborn child, which is what happens when she is impregnated. But she did actually have an abortion, leading the hair god, Henrik, to be angry and punish her and take everyone from the truck and put them in a cave and turn them into trees. Now, this left Ida's friends as survivors, and from what I understood, they existed only to push Astrid towards the finale. That's at least what I got from it personally. It's engineered so that Astrid works all of this out, and throughout the season, she believes the hair god wants her, which, yes, he does. Now, 21 years later from the equinox, she heads to the island and finds her sister as they walk off together as the sisters of the equinox heading towards the hair god. We then see people stuck in the cave to be released as we see a spring harvest occur. Now, overall, this was a really interesting and layered show and gave me some really big dark vibes uh, mixed with Midsummer as well. But to be honest, they didn't really stick the landing as it's a sort of open-ended one, but it's also closed. And I expected a bit more of a cult mystery throughout the town and just a, a bit more, in my opinion, a bit more meat at the ending. But I thought it was decent. It was a really good show. It kind of came out of nowhere. I was going to do a Transformers video today, but I got a screener of this and I just really had to watch it. I, just, I was addicted to it. It might be because I'm watching Lost again at the moment. But overall, this was a quite a simplistic story there. And uh, to be honest, a lot of the plot points could have been cut. I mean, this could have even been four episodes, but... I think six was sort of the perfect amount there. And while the dubbing, the English dubbing was pretty bad, the acting wasn't very good at all. Overall, I did enjoy it. And I think if you haven't watched it, I'm sorry you've had the whole season spoiled, but it's definitely worth checking out there. And if you haven't seen Dark, I really would recommend going out and checking out Dark. But that's just a short one here for you. Please do subscribe with notifications on if you want more from us. And please do drop a like and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.